If we went into your kitchen and we dumped your trash on the ground, we would find over 30% is actually not trash at all. It's compostable material. So that means that a third of the stuff that you're hauling out of your house to the landfill is actually a valuable resource. We're here to make sure that you never have to put your resources in the trash again and that you can sort of be part of a productive system that takes those resources and, uh, and enriches the community. So my name's Dustin and you and I make this. Eastside Comp Peddlers is an organization that picks up people's kitchen scraps from their homes or businesses and takes it to local farms to break down into compost and keep it out of the landfill. My name is Eric and together we make this. One thing that makes the, the peddlers unique is that we do 100% of our collections with bicycles. So we're 100% bike powered. That means that we run on fat instead of fossil fuels. Our bicycles and our actions in the community are a way for people to learn sometimes even what composting is and from there though most people really want to get involved. We chose the Eastside Compost Peddlers because we loved the fact that they were local, um, we liked that they were here on the east side and we thought the bikes were really cool. Our goals as a family for composting are to keep a lot of our food scraps out of the garbage and to really support a lot of the local farms that we love to buy from at the farmers markets. And Composting to me is a way to be directly involved in the natural systems of life. When you compost, you know that your food waste breaks down and becomes a resource. And that's really exciting to see it happen right before your eyes. It's really important to us to be an active part of our community. We don't want to just be providing a service. We want to be involved in the community and involved in enriching our community. We launched our program by having this competition where we allowed people to vote and the neighborhood that got the most votes won a free month of our service. And it allowed us to kind of trust East Austin for where we should start rather than trust ourselves. So we kind of crowdsourced how we should open our business. With our service, we just make it really simple to actually start composting. You also get the peace of mind, I guess, that you're kind of contributing to a solution instead of adding to a problem. Vancouver Island and everywhere around the world, human beings rely on forests. They provide clean air to breathe and water to drink, as well as jobs and recreation. They also help to stabilize the Earth's climate. Currently around the world, forests are disappearing faster than they can be replanted. Humanity cannot afford to lose this important natural resource, so we have therefore embarked on a mission to build a tree rover, a tree planting robot. Past summer, we took a four month break from school and have constructed a proof of concept robot. This prototype can autonomously plant multiple trees with no human interaction. We are very proud of what we accomplished, but we need your help to continue. We would like to improve the tree rover so that it can navigate further and traverse rougher terrain while carrying more trees. In return for your support, the tree rover will plant a tree for you or someone special. We will film your tree being planted and send you the video clip. Which will look something like this. So please. 
please contribute to the Tree Rover Project. We have the Tree Rover plant one for you. Oxford-based startup to use drones to fight deforestation. Oxford-based startup Biocarbon Engineering is planning to fight industrial deforestation by planting 1 billion trees a year using drones. The drones used by Biocarbon Engineering would first fly above a selected area, map its level of deforestation, and then report its potential for reforestation. After that, automated planting drones carrying seed pods would fly 1 to 2 meters above the ground, following a predetermined planting pattern, and fire germinated seeds into the soil. A small pressurized canister would provide the necessary propulsive force for the seed pods to easily penetrate the soil surface. Seed pods filled with nutritious hydrogel to reduce impact forces on the seedlings during planting would then break open upon impact and allow the germinated seeds to grow. One drone can plant 10 seeds per minute. With two operators controlling multiple drones, 36,000 trees could be planted in a single day. The biocarbon engineering system is not as good as hand planting, but it's much quicker and less expensive than traditional planting systems. What I do today is driven by two ancient Indian Sanskrit philosophies. The first is Vasudhav Kutumbakam, which means entire earth is one single family. Me, you, plants, animals, insects, trees, mice are connected by one single life force. It's the same life force which is inside me is the one which is making a tree grow. We are connected with it. We are dependent on each other. None of these 8.4 million species on our planet can exist in isolation. And we can only flourish when we start coexisting. This is what drives me to make these natural biodiverse systems, which are so full of life, that we have plants, we have insects, we have trees, birds, which are nothing but forests. Forest is simply one small area which is so dense with greenery that you can just not walk into it. And why it is so important to make forests? You know, today we are making 114 cars per minute and in the very same minute we are losing 36 football fields of forest. Now, this cannot go on forever. It's important to make cars and new products and new innovations, but it's also important to keep the balance between industry and the ecology. I'm an industrial engineer. Goal in my life has always been to make more and more products in less amount of time. So today uh, we are making 100 year old forest in just 10 years. And this is what I have made in three years. I happened to meet a scientist who himself has planted four crore trees in his lifetime, which is like 40 million trees in his lifetime. And I was so moved by his methodology, which makes forests grow this fast, that I stopped working in automobile manufacturing. I learned the methodology as a volunteer with him. And started making my own forest. So I started with the backyard of my house and this is a nine months old forest. Once we made it, we could see that number of bird species which we were spotting in that area increased from seven to 17 in just nine months. Also, we saw that the temperature difference during the noon time is five degrees less in this area. Now, having su successfully done it, I wanted to take it a little more further. So I started approaching institutes and NGOs which are working in field of environment. But to my surprise, they were not interested in actually doing the afforestation. So I started approaching landscaping companies and landscapers were making lawns. To make a lawn, you have to remove all the trees, vegetation, herbs, shrubs, whatever exists on the lawn, just kill everything. Import the grass from a faraway continent, we plant the grass, we have to put liters and liters of water to make this grass grow. And the moment it grows, we just bring a mower, burn some fossil fuel and cut this grass away. No growth of native vegetation, they cannot grow. We have to add tons of chemicals to it. And finally, we have to put a big board for the people for whom this was supposed to be enjoyed, that please don't come here and don't enjoy it. So let's stop making lawns now. Rather than making lawns, if we just leave the land the way it is, automatically a forest will grow on that. Let's convert these lawns into forests. This is a 10 years of Miyawaki forest growing on a place which was covered by exotic grass before. 
So these forests are so dense with greenery, you have 30 times more green surface area compared to a lawn. Means 30 times more oxygen, 30 times more CO2 absorption, 30 times less pollution, 30 times better groundwater retention, 30 times better soil protection. So we have this system, nature already has it, and nature develops it. We are just a facilitator. The moment we start the process of making a forest like this, Within 10 years, we can have a self-sustaining system which will exist and flourish for next 9,000 years until the next ice age comes. We plant trees very densely and we choose around 50 to 100 different species, mix them together and create this biodiverse forest because there can't be a forest without diversity. But also there is a lot of hard work behind it. We have to survey the soil, find out what all nutrition it lacks. So we do it in a lab. Survey the local forest to find out the native species, grow the saplings, do a lot of earthworks by adding biomass to it. But this is the part which I love the most. We get people to plant our saplings. We don't plant any sapling by our own. And we get people from two years old to 92 years old, all age group, they come and they just love planting trees. It's, it's something like, they already knew how to do it because we don't teach them anything, they just come and it's like as if they know already. So we have that thing within us. You just have to start and with people like these, we can create the cities of future where plucking a fruit directly from the tree will be easier than going to supermarket and buying a fruit juice. Because if we can move the mountains to extract some iron ore out of it, a mountain full of forest now is just gone. If we can do that within one year, we can obviously create these forests in our backyards, in our houses, around our buildings, everywhere. It just is all it needs is some wastewater from our houses, a little space in our homes and in our hearts. Again, it may seem difficult and rather really ambitious because we have done so much wrong to the environment. But this is the second philosophy which drives it, which is called Aham Brahmasmi. It means that we are a part of the creator. Each one of us has the power of creation within themselves and we can create whatever we imagine. So when you go home, plant few saplings with your family, with your kids, with your parents and make it grow into a forest. And you'll realize that every living organism has the power of creating a better future within themselves. Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs>